Hi, welcome back to Daydreams of Quilts on YouTube. Today I am sewing a featured in the stars quilt and uh, this is one of the blocks. So I've got 30 blocks to make. I'll flash up a little picture for you of my quilt layout. And uh, there'll be a link in the description if you're interested in this quilt pattern. It's in my Etsy shop. But today my main video topic is selling on Etsy, selling sewn items on Etsy. So I, my last video I talked about selling quilts on Etsy, but um, if you're selling quilts, you kind of need to sell something else in your shop as well because quilts are kind of big ticket items and they can take some time to sew, to, well they take time to sew, but they can take time to sell. Uh, sometimes I wait two years for a quilt to sell. So if you're doing the Etsy shop as a bit of a hobby, you might not care too much how quickly things sell, but if you're trying to do this as a side gig or you're the way that you make money, which is how it is for me, it's kind of my full-time job, uh, you need to have income coming in from other things besides just your quilts because the quilt income is kind of like really exciting when it comes in. When you sell a big quilt, it's so exciting, but uh, it, can be a long time between those happy moments when you make a sale like that. So um, I've learned over the years that you need to have repeatable items on Etsy. Like some of my quilts are one of a kind, but some of them can be repeated. So I've created custom listings for quilts and the custom listings are the ones that get the most hits. The quilts that are ready to ship don't get viewed as often as the custom listings because people are coming to Etsy because they want custom. But the thing is, you can't let people just go crazy and dream up some crazy quilt idea and come to you and say, make this quilt. Because first of all, they have no idea how much it's going to cost them, even just for you to figure out how to make it. But um, just the general cost of a quilt, a lot of people just don't even have a clue they they think about comforters at Walmart and they think they can get a quilt for that so my advice is set up a custom listing that has choices like they can pick the size they can pick the color scheme but the actual pattern that you're going to use is already set um, I would not get into designing custom quilts from scratch I've done that a couple of times and very quickly learned to regret it so um, you need to have parameters that you're willing to work within for a custom quilt and just set all that out so the customer already knows uh, what the expectations are and what they're going to be getting in the end but they can customize it to their decor with the colors or with the size and if you have all the multiple sizes listed with the price for each size they already have an idea of what it's going to cost so um, that can save you a lot of heart heartache and that's a repeatable sale so that listing can keep selling and the more listing sells in the Etsy algorithm the higher its listing quality score so it'll get shown to people more often it'll get closer to the first page of search I have some uh, custom listings that have made it to the first page of search so that's the key to that but besides selling quilts which as we have already said are kind of expensive uh, you need to maybe look at selling bags or zipper pouches or kitchen accessories like hot pads or placemats. Other things that you can milk, make that are within the quilting realm but they aren't as expensive as a quilt. Um, especially when people are shopping for Christmas gifts which is the busiest time of year on Etsy. Uh, they're willing to spend more but maybe not $300. Maybe they're willing to spend $80 on a a knitting bag as opposed to $350 for a throw quilt. So you kind of need to have a range of items and a range of prices and some things can be one of a kind but you also need to mix in their repeatable listings or things you can make over and over again. Like if you can make a quilt with Kona solids, you know you can always get Kona solids. Um, you might not be able to get a certain line in a few months once it's out of print and it's no longer available in the quilt shops. So think about what can you make that's repeatable? What can you make that you can offer as a custom listing but it's within certain parameters? 
Uh, what can you make that's personalized? Maybe you can put uh, someone's initial or someone's name on a project. Um, I know at Christmas I do Christmas stockings and I offer to put the names on with my Cricut. Uh, I have a custom quilt listing for an initial quilt so you can get the person's initial in a block on the quilt. Uh, that kind of thing. The more something sells over and over on Etsy, the higher it gets in search. And um, But still, they have sort of factored in one of a kind into their algorithm as well. They've said that if your shop continually sells an item, even if it's one of a kind, then they, your one of a kind items could still show higher in search because they are, have a good chance of selling. So even with the one of a kind quilts, you may still get shown higher in search the more quilts that your shop sells. So there's that. But oh, and another thing that I wanted to mention is um, a lot of business coaches will say you need to release like a big collection and build a bunch of excitement and and release like 10 items at a time. And I agree with that. I, I fully agree with that. But the thing with the Etsy algorithm is the more times you list, the happier the algorithm is. It wants to see that you are an active shop and that you're continually putting out new things, which can become exhausting. But if you're doing a collection, then I would list one item of the collection every day instead of putting all 10 items in on one day. And that way you can take advantage of that build up in the algorithm. And then once you have all your 10 items in your collection listed, then you can do this big email and Instagram post and say, yeah, my collection's live and here's a discount code to come by it, that kind of thing. Um, but you're still taking advantage of the algorithm by posting a new item every day instead of posting all 10 at once. And the other thing I would say to that is um, you will get a boost in search for each new listing while the algorithm tries to figure out where to place you because you don't have a listing quality score yet on a new listing. So it's trying to give you a listing quality score. So you will get a bit of a boost um, on your listing for the first few days anyway. So you may as well take advantage of that by spreading out your listings instead of listing them all at once. So I hope that this video has been helpful to you, giving you some tips for selling on Etsy, especially if you're new. Um, but definitely think about ways you can diversify your shop. Your items could still all be related to sewing or quilting, but not necessarily just big quilts. Try to think about um, a price range and a product range so that you can have continuous sales instead of waiting for that one big sale to come in every once in a while. Okay, best of luck selling on Etsy. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos from Daydreams of Quilts.